Well, hi there. Do you remember that out of sync cicada? The most amazing cicada in the world that uh, appeared at my place in early May. Uh, last night it was put in this tree here and I'm just trying to find it. Maybe it's fallen to the ground. There she is. Uh, it looks like she's still alive. She's on her back. Uh, it looks like the ants haven't attacked her and uh, most importantly the birds have not found her. Uh, I'll go and set it up in a tank as my son suggested in the other video. The video about this cicada was uploaded. Many people suggested to go and look for other cicadas which are out of time. I can't see any more. I can see one of those damn caterpillars down there. They are a menace. Along this wall here was another spot where cicadas would often pop up. Uh, that is in November or December of the, of the year and uh, certainly not in May. The wood of the back steps here was another place where I'd often see cicadas emerging in the early mornings. Uh, that's during summer. <laughs> Uh, their shells would often litter that area there, down the gap there, but there's a lot of redback spiders down there these days. No, they're not sticking out at me. I can't see any other shells. The sun's popping in and out today. Uh, she's reveling in the sun. She's starting to really wake up. Uh, it's quite sad because when this cicada has appeared, there are none of her other folk around. She is a lone cicada and there's no way she's going to breed on, uh, especially when you haven't got a mate. As my son suggested in the other video when we found the cicada, I've set up a little temporary home here. Mind you, that's not really going to help her because she needs a live tree to uh, basically feed the sap on to live on. This is the part of the house where a bluebell a cat had found that cicada and we picked it up at night and saved it. It was that spot right there. And I'm just having a scout around here uh, looking for a shell. It's not poking out at me, I can tell you. And I'll just look in the garden on the other side. Okay, because uh, the shells can be found up, uh, well, they can go up quite some height, but often, I don't know, they're found up a little way up a tree. Okay, I've just seen one there, whether it's hers or not, it's another question, isn't it? I've also noticed here, of curiosity, uh, there's one of those leaf spiders, the spiders that love to live inside a leaf and uh, do their stuff. I'm just going to come in and borrow this uh, for this video. This absolutely beautiful black and deep red-eyed Australian cicada is one that I'm going to remember for a very, very long time. I've never seen one so out of sync with nature before. I had a chat to some people in the suburb when I went for my morning walk and people that I know in the suburb. I asked them, have you ever seen a cicada in May <laughs> during the year? And they looked at me like I was crazy. I said, hey, I've just had one. I read some of the comments that people were talking about cicadas on the original upload when we found this girl. And people were talking about Fukushima radiation, they were talking about global warming, they were also talking about crazy nature. Uh, my son was talking about Donald Trump as being the person to blame. Um, I don't think we've really found the seed of what's going on here, apart from I think the Fukushima radiation was a very curious one. Back in 2013 was our prime year of cicadas, and I went up to my local school and I did a bit of a study of one tree, and we'll probably flash over to some footage here, of cicadas on mass on a prime year uh, it's quite amazing how many of these uh, guys and girls get together and I think they mass like this as a form of protection because they make so much noise that is the males make the noise the birds just cannot work out where they are and in the end when you have them on mass they look like the bark on a tree Now, the girl here that has come out all by herself, uh, she's a loner. There's no way that she can uh, breed on and then lay her eggs into a tree. And there has been a bit of an argument about her sex. This one is a girl, and I will just go in a bit closer and show you why I know that. I'm not sure how well I can explain this. I can't see any drums on this cicada, and people start counting the sections here as well, I think. I don't do that, I just look for drums, and the fact that it's actually quite short here, but it sometimes varies depending on what species of cicada you're looking at. I'm pretty sure uh, what I've got in my hands here is a little girl. And while I'm thinking about the underneath of this cicada, there's another aspect to them which is quite unusual, and there's like a sucking straw that they've got, it's right up the centre there, I'm just touching it there. They'll suck sap from a tree, that's how they feed, they don't bite or anything. And if you see them on mass and they're on a tree and they're feeding, they'll be up on the tree with that sucker into the tree 
and what happens is at the other end they'll be spraying liquid it's like cicada rain I might have some footage of that going on uh, very very strange sort of misty rain that comes out of these guys should I say cicada piss I hope I don't get flagged for saying the word piss but uh, when they're feeding they can drain a tree of a whole ton of resources it's quite amazing when you see them feeding on mass so that there is a cicada which is basically an adult uh, but it spends many 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 years underground uh, growing bigger and bigger in basically that form there I've never seen them uh, when they're tiny tiny nymphs and they've just fallen off the tree after being laid as eggs uh, I think they're extremely small at that stage uh, but uh, it's a mystery what these guys get up to underneath the ground. Some people say they feed from the roots of trees. I mean, I've heard all different sorts of ideas about what they get up to. I think it's a total mystery. They can crawl around and drift well away from where they fall into the ground. That's why I have them coming up in strange parts around our house. You'll find the shells sometimes underneath the house. Um, but it's when they emerge from this nymph state here... It's when they're at their most vulnerable, especially when they're coming out of their shell, they're sort of stuck without the ability to fly. And often you'll see them doing this in the very early hours of the morning. That's their little protective time. And they've got to get up and moving before the birds get up. Um, when cicada seasons are on, the birds are very, very aware uh, that there's an easy meal potentially hanging about, especially if there is a cicada stuck in its shell. And sadly, I've seen that a couple of times and I've had that shown on my video. Um, just amazing creatures. Uh, I heard some people saying they'd never have them around their place or in their country, which is quite sad. I think they're, they're really in many parts of the world. I think they're more of a warmer climate type of thing, which, again, surprises me when this one had emerged. I mean, we've been having temperatures of 10 degrees Celsius in the morning. So this cicada has basically come up out of the ground into basically winter conditions, uh, which is even more amazing. Uh, but sadly... Well, the most unamazing aspect of this cicada is it's uh, a total loner. In fact, I think it's just realized it's mistaken. and it's trying to get back in its shell there. What I'll do is I'll put this cicada back into our temporary home. Yes, uh, this cicada is trying to get back into its shell and we will get it down into the little home here. That was uh, a great little suggestion by my son. Uh, whether or not it's going to help, but I don't know. Maybe being in there is uh, better than being eaten by... A bird or a cat well there's a calendar of 2017 you can see it's May 2nd little red dot there and I'm gonna try and explain the difference between where I live and you live the bulk of my audience come from the northern hemisphere of planet Earth you would have the warmer time of the year would be these months here that would be your summertime there well for me that's when I'm in the depths of winter Sakata was found here May 1 okay very close to the very cold part of the year now normally cicadas in australia would start to appear in november you'd see them in december you would see them in january maybe in february now someone in my suburb reported seeing one in the first week of march but they said they've never heard of one down here in may i saw comments talking about weather events and strange things that have happened in my part of town yes we had a very very long summer in a sense but we had some intense rain i just did some videos about that that was at the end of march uh there was some nice warm weather into april so our easter was lovely but the cold weather started to really kick in in this last week of april and certainly into the time when our little cicada friend decided to appear but I'll be honest here, to get your head around the different seasons and why it's different all over the world, it can be a little bit tricky to understand. And let me show you the way that I was taught many, many years ago in a very simple little experiment. Well, this video is getting a little bit too long. My Apple Planet Earth would blow out this video to being way too long. And I think it deserves to be a separate upload. I learnt this method on Australian TV and I'm still trying to find the source material. YouTube is fantastic for finding the original clips of things. It's either Carl Sagan showed it this way or an Australian children's TV show called The Curiosity Show from a long time ago. This method of showing the seasons is fantastic because it's a very physical method. I looked all over YouTube of how people are explaining this and there's a lot of information that you don't really need to know. The really, really important part to this is understanding how something on a tilt can be affected by a heat source. So many of the people who are trying to explain this on YouTube put in tons and tons and tons of info that are not really important to what's going on. And maybe I need to do an Apple Earth Mark II which actually shows the countries in form and not just letters 
also helps if I put South Africa in as well. I know my son was keen to keep the cicada in a little home, but I'm thinking if it has enough strength, it needs to go on a tree, needs to start feeding. And the problem I've seen with this cicada is it just doesn't have the strength and the sense to sort of start feeding. Come on, just hang in there, little one, please. I know there's not much hope for you, but at least I want you to have your, your last days in a natural habitat. Okay, just stick on there and if it's got any sort of sense, it'll start feeding from that tree. While it's climbing there, it's probably getting a bit of warmth from the sun. Oh, poor thing, hey? Well, some good news. Uh, it's actually getting a little bit of strength up. It's starting to climb up there. Oh, oh no, it's just so sad. It's no. Nah. Don't think it's going to be around much longer. The trouble is, uh, if it can't cling onto the tree, it's going to become bird food really, really fast. In the end, nature will decide the cicada's fate. It can be so brutal and cruel, but that's the way nature plays out.